Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing how to upgrade your virtual RAM in a Windows computer. Now this is a Windows 10 computer that we're going to be doing today's demonstration on, but this should work on earlier versions of Windows. Now I do want to make a clear distinction between what we are doing and physically adding RAM. We are not putting in any additional RAM into this computer. What we're doing is we are allotting more of the hard disk space to appear as RAM in the event that we need additional space for our memory. This is really for computers that have very low memory and are constantly bogging down. If you are rarely ever running out of memory on your computer, this probably will not really help your performance. But I thought I would make this video today. It should help out people that are not using a lot of RAM in their computer and either don't want to pay for an upgrade or their hardware does not support a memory upgrade. So the first thing we're going to do is type in system. I'm going to left click on system here. We can see we can currently have one gigabyte of RAM installed which is definitely not that much and this is a perfect example for what we're about to do today. So I'm going to left click on advanced system settings here on the left side. Under the advanced tab under system properties left click on the settings button underneath performance. Now left click on the advanced tab again under performance options. Now under virtual memory left click on this change button uncheck automatically manage paging file size for all drives this will allow us to customize our size here so click on custom size and now using the information we have in our system page we can see we have one gigabyte of RAM installed what you have to do is or if you can just do it in your head you want I'm gonna open up a calculator here on the computer now what we have to do is take the installed RAM value in gigabytes, multiply it by 1024 to get the equivalent value in megabytes, and then we're going to multiply this number that we get after all of that by 1.5. This is what I would consider to be a safe amount of virtual memory that we are going to allot for any computer. So however many gigabytes you have, that's 1024 megabytes. If you have 2 gigabytes, multiply this number by 2. If you have 4, multiply this number by 4. And then once you have that number, multiply that by 1.5. And I get 1536 megabytes, or 1536 megabytes I can put in here. Now whatever number you get, type it into both the initial size and maximum size boxes. Now you want to click on Set. You can see that our information has changed up here. Now I do want to note, make sure you're doing this custom size on the, on the correct drive. Some people might have a recovery drive also listed here, or in my instance we only have one drive so this works out perfectly, but just be mindful of which hard disk you are doing this on. You want to do it on the main hard drive. Then I'm going to, like I already said, we already clicked on set, set our current value. You can click on OK. I'm going to have to restart the computer before the changes can take effect. I'm going to click on OK again, just close out all this. I'm going to restart the computer here, and I'll be right back. Hello everyone, I'm back from restart. I just want to let everybody know this was successfully accomplished. If you go underneath the system information that we were under before, we can see that there's still one gigabyte of installed memory. But if you open up the system information window, so you can actually just type in system information or you could do what I did and if you go on run, you could type in MS info 32 and then do enter and you're going to come up with the system information window. And if we go down this list here, we can see under total virtual memory, we have 2.5 gigabytes, which is 1.5 times larger than the value of our current RAM on the system and this is the number that we put in again so if you would take the megabyte value that we got on the calculator 
and convert it to gigabytes, this is what you would have. So that is how you could check to make sure it worked. So I hope this tutorial helped you guys out, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.